This is the beginning of the trip all the way to San Antonio to watch the, this is weird to say, the San Antonio Spurs versus the Golden State Warriors. As a Mavs fan, it's weird saying I'm going to a game of teams that I don't, that I'm not a fan of necessarily, right? So today we're going to watch the Spurs versus the Golden State Warriors inside of the Alamo Dome to create history and have the biggest attendance for an NBA game, like 64,000 plus. I'm gonna go there right now, leaving from Kingsville, Texas, going straight to San Antonio. So this is the start of that vlog, but I'm gonna save all that time of the two hours that I'm gonna drive for y'all. And we're gonna skip that part. We're gonna get straight to uh, uh, the next stop. Let's go. Me rocking my Mav shit, all right? So let's go. let's go. Let's go make history, guys. Largest crowd in the entire NBA history here at the Spurs game in the Alamo Dome. Let's go. Rocking some Lucas.
called it a called it an early game trying to get home. It's a two hour drive home, but Spurs ain't got enough firepower. And I'm saying this with like halfway in the third quarter, so we'll see if they end up winning. But overall they just they ain't got it, man. They ain't got it to keep up with, with the Warriors. All right, so before we end this video, I really wanted to go over a few items um, when it comes to how the game went. I think they could have improved it, actually. They really could have improved it. So I know the Dallas Mavericks last year, when it was Dirk's uh, jersey retirement, they wanted to play the Warriors as well. But again, we had Luka, Jalen Brunson. We had a good team, and we had a good chance of beating them, and we did. The Spurs, I don't know why we why we why y'all scheduled the warriors for your 50th game maybe because um because of that one that one season opener game where the water had a flood of the game maybe because of that but i think you would <clears throat> i think it would have been better off scheduling either the lakers for it because they do have lebron or even the mavericks as well because they have luca and just because a lot of Mavs fans would have showed up for that um, and again, I don't think we're giving enough credit for the to the Spurs, you know, fan base because they showed up, and I think they would have showed up regardless of who the team was. I just think if you would have scheduled a team that they would have been able to be more competitive with, would have been a lot better. The game would have been a lot more funner. And as you saw in that video, I, I you know, I le legit got up after the Vicente Fernandez song, and I was like, I'm out, I'm out, because I already know. And during the first half, they just, the Spurs did not have enough firepower at all. They didn't. Um, sorry if I looked like this. I just woke up. But, and as I'm walking out, I see the score. Then I got home and I saw the score. I was like, yeah, bro. I made the right call leaving early because the traffic was horrible just to get into this building. And seeing that much people, I've, I've been to a Royal Rumble there before. And, and exiting that that building is, is, is a cluster. So... I already know I'm going to the Royal Rumble in a couple of weeks again, and I'll be vlogging there again. Um, but i definitely try to do a different parking situation. But, yeah, those are my thoughts. I mean, I, I enjoyed uh, the overall venue, the overall way they approached it. Um, one thing I did notice when I was walking out at halftime is that there were so many people in such a long, long, long line for, like, beverages or food. And I don't think that venue does a good enough job being able to get these people through because there's a bunch of people I saw and I'm pretty sure the person that I last saw like at the end of the line I'm pretty sure they didn't get back into that game until like halfway through the third quarter where the third quarter was almost done that's how long these lines were and that's why it looked kind of empty because everybody was was in the concession stand um so some of these people probably didn't get back to the seats till the fourth quarter and by that point it was a wrap like what game is there left? Like you just spent 40, 50 bucks waiting for an, an waiting an hour to get this food or beverage, and then you get back to the game and it's already over. And that's why I say I think if you would have, you know, booked the Lakers because they're a historic team with LeBron, um, they suck. You would have had a better outcome and a better game, more entertaining game. Or if you booked the Mavericks, you you had an uh, interstate city that would have showed up and you would have been more competitive with. And on that stage, that, that would have been awesome to see. And, you know, Mavericks, it's just a little biased. But but overall, I enjoyed it. It was cool to see. Uh, cool to be a part of uh, another fan base. I like how they do the free throw chants. I like their chants in general. Uh, the whole Avery Johnson part was pretty cool because he was a, a Mavericks head coach as well. So overall, you know, I got to learn about a lot of the, the Spurs history. I didn't even know they were... Um, a team that originated from Dallas so that's pretty interesting too so overall I enjoyed it shout out to the Spurs fans shout out to some of the Mavs fans I ran I ran into uh when we ran into each other it was like ah you know it was it was yeah y'all probably gonna clip that little part right there but nah it was, it was fun uh, I ran into several Cowboys fans as well um but it was all love man uh, I did get a few side eyes with my Mavs gear but it was all cool man I enjoyed it and if you saw me at the game Definitely subscribe to this channel. I'll be back in San Antonio for the Mavs versus Spurs in March. Anyway, it's been your boy TGK. Catch you on the next one.